In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to use the Twitter API. First, we'll list out all of the updates for a single user. Then we'll fetch all of the updates for a list that belongs to that user. The API is very straightforward to use. It's just a series of REST HTTP calls. And in some cases, you need to pass a username and password. In other cases, you can access the API anonymously, which we're going to do in this screencast. You can see the API documentation it's at apiwiki.twitter.com and you can see a list of functions that are available from the API. So I'll just click on user timeline. Now you can see the URL for the web service and the list of formats that are available and the different inputs. So let's just begin here. I'm going to paste in the URL. We'll call it endpoint. And I'm going to pass it to sprintf because I'm going to replace a couple of parameters. So format can be JSON because it's easy to decode. And we're going to add a parameter. Substitute the username. We're going to use PHP Riot. And it doesn't say this in that documentation at the top, but down here you can see that you can insert the username just in here. So that's where we're going to put that. So now we have the endpoint for this call. So we'll use curl to fetch this data. So first we need to init the connection and we're going to set curl to return the data rather than just outputting it directly because that's of no use to us. So set that to true and that's all we need to do for setting up the connection. Now we can run the, run the request. So curl exec and we're going to check the return data from the call just to make sure that it was a valid request. So we'll call that info and we'll use the get info call. And finally, we'll close the connection. We'll just go back to the API. Now if you scroll down, response codes and error codes. Now they make good use of HTTP error codes. So if you do something like an invalid username or password, you get the unauthorized. So to do so, we can check the <coughs> response code, no, sorry, HTTP code value from the get info call. So we wanna make sure it's 200. And just do a close here. Now this isn't very good error handling but it demonstrates at least what needs to be done. You can also check for other response codes. So as an example, if you want to make sure the username and password are correct, um, we're not actually using username and password here, so that should never happen. So at this stage, we have our response data in here in data. And because we requested it in JSON format, which is up here, we can then decode it using the JSON decode function. So we can just call this tweets and JSON decode. I spelled that wrong. And we pass true to return it as an array. And we'll just dump that out just so I can show you. And I'll just exit and then return here and refresh and you can see here all the data now there's quite a few tweets in there um, so now what we need to do is make use of this data the other thing to notice is this has returned a lot of data because we haven't actually limited the results so you can see the scroll bar here indicates there's a lot of data so let's just return back to the API call now one of the problems with the Twitter API is 
some of the parameters are a bit inconsistent between calls. So we run user timeline. So for one call, it might be per page, whereas on this call, it's count. So that restricts the number returned. So we're just going to change that to 10 just to shorten the data. So that's simply a matter of adding an extra parameter. And I'll just shift that down so you can see it. And we save and return. Now I actually typed in limit one, so there's only one return here. But if I make that 10 and refresh, now you can see, well, there's still a lot of data, but we're restricting it at least. Now if we return here, we can remove this debug code. And now we can loop over the return data, which is in tweets. And we'll call it tweet. So we'll just give that a class that lets you style it easily. And now it's good practice to always use HTML special special chars. So your code will be XHTML compliant. So that'll escape things like ampersands. And if you remember from just a second ago, it was in the text parameter. So if we save that now, Now they're all on single lines here, so it's not overly useful. However, you can format that as required. I guess if you wanted to output multiple or tweets from multiple users, you can output their image as well. So let's just call tweet. Now I think it was profile image URL. Set up. And that was right. So that's just output the image that's associated with the Twitter account. If you need a smaller image, you can use CSS to resize these. So that's all there is for outputting the tweets from a single user. So to extend this to output tweets from multiple users, um, now we're going to change this to list timeline. And we're going to list statuses, which is this call here. So the URL here so just swapping over that URL. So here is the list name, uh, sorry, the username, and here's the list name. And as I mentioned before, the limit parameters are somewhat inconsistent. So this one's per page. Now you can specify the page number as well and specify a range, earliest and latest, for which tweets are returned, but we'll just ignore that for now. So we're going to restrict this to, let's say, um, 30. And now we can specify the name of the list, which is industry. So that's all that was required to update that. Now this code's identical. Don't need to change anything. The only thing you might want to change is outputting the actual tweet details, but Now I've actually written it to the wrong file, but let's not worry about that for now. So I'll just refresh that. So now it should show the list timeline. And as you can see here, the images are a bit over the place. But if we just add some CSS,
if I refresh, hopefully these images will be a bit smaller. And there you go. Now there's a lot of things you can do with this. Now you might want to link back to the feed of whichever user, so you could put in the URL here, um, or you could auto highlight these links. Twitter will actually do that for you when you're viewing on twitter.com, but when it's in the API, they don't do that for you. 